Good morning, everyone. My name is Kimberly Wright. Welcome to Hand Built Pottery. Please, young people, if you're not speaking right now, keep yourself muted because I can hear background noise. Keep yourself muted. Thank you so much. All right. Today is May the 28th. It's Friday. It's 2021. Um, yesterday, we had a lot of discussions and we watched videos. Today, we're going to have our demo, which is going to be how to draw 3D paper shaped templates. I'm going to put that in the chat. This is very handy for uh, hand building. This is definitely what this class is all about, hand building. Uh, you have so many techniques in the ceramic world, like hand built pottery, throwing. Uh, you can do so many other things as pertains to raccoon firing and uh, wax resist and just so many other processes. But however, this is very handy when it comes to uh, visualizing, visualizing something in a 3D shape and being able to make a template to lay on the clay, cut it out, and put the pieces all together. So we're going to start with some basic shapes. And later on, uh, probably in the classroom or on and on Zoom, our Zoom classes, I will be probably going into something uh, do, drawing a shape that's a little bit more elaborate, like a 3D vase or a vase. So I'm just going to put that in the chat, what we're doing today. If you all have any questions or comments, please unmute yourself, but be mindful if you are unmuted, you have background noise. All right, so how to draw a 3D Paper shape template. All right, so I wrote in the chat what we're actually doing. And be mindful that you want to start basic to build yourself up to see what you're actually able to create. And so uh, that's why I'm starting basic with you guys. And we, what we're going to do is just basically geometric shapes, such as like a pyramid or a rectangle, a square, or something like that. So let's get closer to all of our materials. Let me move the camera up. Like I said, we're starting with uh, basic geometric shapes. Later on, we'll go on to uh something more elaborate like a vase or a vase and there are so many shapes there are different shapes that you can make for example i'm using this shape for something else in one of my classes making something out of nothing which is an african shape but i've already made like a template out of newspaper there's something that i could possibly do with this to make it three-dimensional you know, all I have to do is make two of these. I'll have a back and the front and then make the whole outer side and the foot so that it can stand and leave it open right here. And that could be a, 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 a vase, but shaped like the shape of Africa, shaped into the continent of Africa. All right. So depending on how many pieces I want to create today, it's probably going to be I'm going to aim for four. However, I might not make nothing but one. So I'm just going to divide this poster board that I have into four sections so that I already have that neat as it pertains to the size that I'm going to do the templates on. So I'm sectioning the poster board into four parts because I think I'm going to shoot for four different uh, template designs. And that way it'll keep my design uh, proportionate as it pertains to size, not going too large or 
having it too small. And now I'm going the other way. And even I haven't measured the poster board out completely, I'm just uh, measuring it from just eyeballing it. If you want to measure it completely, you can. I don't know if you can even see these lines, but I will make them darker. If you have even one sheet of paper, you are able to take your paper right now and a pencil to make one of these uh, shapes with me. And the next time, if you even have clay now, you can, you don't have to do it today, but you can use that template to make one of these shapes with your clay. So if you wanna go ahead and grab some paper while I am drawing these, meaning like you only need one sheet, and a pencil and you don't have to have a marker right now but you need a marker later to make the lines darker so that you'll be able to see want to get a pencil and make a template right now here's the time to go ahead and get it so if you already have more clay in your own time and space you can go ahead and create the three-dimensional shape. Okay, so this is the four quadrants or four squares. And if I wanted to, I could just go ahead and cut them out now, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it solid. Uh, what you want to do is, you see I have several shapes, like an octagon from my cookie cutters and a square but I'm not sure if this is the only thing I have at home from the classroom. So I'm not sure if that's large enough, but I may use this square from a box that I have. I have like a cardboard box with a circle. I have this stretch magic circle size that I could possibly use, you know, and also I just looked over and saw this masking tape. I can use the circle here if I like. All right. If you, we're looking over here, if I want to use the bottom of this Mod Podge thing for a circle. It just depends on uh, what size you want, basically. So what I'm going to do for the first one is I'm going to be doing the template for a cylinder. Cylinder. All right. So in, for a cylinder, I need like a rectangle instead of going vertical vertical, we're going to go uh, horizontal to the side. So I'm laying this down and I'll let you see each design once I'm finished with uh, drawing it if you're not able to see it. So I think the circle I want to use will probably be I think I'm going to use the circle inside of the masking tape. Is that too large? Actually, that's too large, so I'm going to go back to the stretch magic circle. And what I want to do is I'm going to use the edge of this block here and put a circle here and a circle on this side, and then I'm going to create a rectangle there. So let me do that. And then I'll show you, young people, what you have. Now you can always, the reason why I'm doing it with a poster board as well is because the poster board is stiff, and you'll be able to keep these templates and reuse them for different things, if you'd like, meaning to make different things. A cylinder is just a basic shape, but there are so many things that are shaped like a cylinder that if you wanted to create several things in clay, you would always have this cylindrical uh, template. And so now I'm going to create my uh, rectangle. And I'm going to measure that as well, so I'll make sure that both sides are the same. All 
right? I have one side done. And then we're going to do the measure it so that each side is even. All right, so I'm measuring this right side. It's going to be five and a quarter. So going back, do the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, looks good. It might not be perfect, but it's close. Close to per perfection. Some of these things may seem really elementary, but when it's time to actually build, you'll see that they are really uh, useful and handy. All right, so you may not be able to see this. And remember I said we're gonna get at least two done. And so I guess to keep your attention, I will go ahead and uh, block this out dark so you'll see what the cylinder looks like. I have to get the ruler again to make sure that my lines stay straight. And so we go up just a little bit more. I'm going to the other side. So just like I am doing, you want to take your time and just make sure you're doing the best that you can. What else can you do? Do your best. Just take your time. Other end. I'm also going back to get my same piece to use that to uh, trace the circle so I won't be wiggling all around this circle and mess up the smoothness of it. And I'm going to the opposite side. It's basically two circles and a rectangle. And it's in the view of you looking at it flat. Now when you put it all together, it's going to become three-dimensional. All right, so that's our first design. Like I said, we may get a chance to do two or three more. Can anybody see how uh, let me uh, please if you want to allow yourself to unmute. Do so. I love your hair, Miss Jacqueline. You look beautiful. Everybody? Anybody? What I'm asking is do you see how this will become three, three dimensional? No, I'm completely. Uh, Lost. I, I'm just watching to see what this is going to end up being. This is but. a cylinder. I said this is a cylinder. Right. I know. I'm okay. Listening. So if I cut this shape out, you see that? Not cutting three pieces out. You leave the circles as a part of the rectangle. Let me go. I think I can see it, Cameron. Yes, ma'am. It looks like you would stand the circles up and then wrap the, the oblong piece around it to make like um the sides. Like yeah. a can, like it would be like a can or something. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so you're gonna lay this on when you roll out your slab, you're gonna lay this on the clay flat and trace it. And basically all you're gonna do is this piece is gonna come up, that's gonna be right. the base. Yeah. That's gonna be the top, then you're gonna roll that and that's gonna be the cylinder. Right. Yeah. 
Now, I got it. All right. Somebody just give me one thing that you could possibly make with a cylinder. What I'm trying to say is, think of uh, shapes like if I if you just had a flat circle, then somebody would say, oh, I'm making a donut or I'm making a wheel. Uh, you can make a vase. Uh, a candy dish. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Okay, I do understand. You can make anything. You can make anything. It's going to be a cylinder, so you can have a lid and top on it and open it up and put stuff in it. But I'm trying to ask you, like, give me something that would be in the shape of a cylinder. In like a, a block? Can you do a block? A block it could be a car. A oh, you mean an object. Say that again, Miss Gloria. I'm sorry. Like a car? But it, then it would need four of the, the circles. I'm not saying you can't use a cylinder to make a car, but I just want anything that's... Okay, for example, what about if you made this? All you had to do was put this particular condiment top on it. What if you was making a, a mustard, ketchup, and something? All I'm saying is what would be... If I had an octagon, somebody would say, oh, you can make a stop sign. You know, you're looking for things that have the shape of an octagon. An orange juice can? Yep, you can make an orange juice, not can. Well, you, I guess oh, maybe can. orange juice does come in a can. Any of uh, orange juice container or something. But, see the um, body of a giraffe. You can put a long neck on it and some legs. And you can make a candy cane. All you have to do is put a hook on it. There's so many things. I was trying to get y'all to think more, but there's so many things that you can make with the cylindrical shape. All right. So right now we're going to do one that should be a little quicker. And it's going to be a cube. Cube. So I'm just saying if anyone wants to make these shapes, and it'll be something that you can use in your studio or in your works, feel free. So I definitely am going to use this smaller square looking at my space here. And what I'm going to do is draw one second. I'm going to draw uh, four squares in a line right beside each other. So this piece is going to be done vertically. I hope I can get it as straight as possible. And so just save time. I think I'm going to, instead of, uh, I usually freestyle with the pencil first and instead of uh, making any uh, mistakes. So I don't have to, but I think I can go ahead and do this in one time. So if anybody else out here has a square, I'm showing you now how to create a cube. You have to do four in a row. Four squares in a row, right beside each other. That's two three and four all right i want to just stop and show you that for a second so you see you have the four squares in the row here one two three four and from the bottom or each either side, it doesn't matter. You want to do two squares on the outside of the second square. So if you're coming from this side, you're going to have two squares here. If you're coming from this side, you're going to have two squares there. So we're going to just go ahead and pre create those two. Just make sure to lay the tool or whatever you're using for a square, you know, measure it as straight as you can right beside that second square. Okay. 
Now, if you had to build something like a cube, you and and I had this template and you did not, you, it would take you far longer to make a cube than me, than myself, because I would just have my template, trace it and go ahead and put those pieces together. All right. Everybody see that? Once again, if you want to mute, unmute yourselves, you can, um, you might ask yourself why you got to go back and forth with the uh, mutant, but I know y'all just heard somebody had some, like, a lot of background noise as I was going into my demonstration again. So I just muted you all. It's nothing but a click of a button. So it's no problem. All right. So you if, can make a box. Yeah, a box. You can make a box. Right. A cube. Yes. A cube. Yes, the correct term is a cube, but however, it is a box. So, uh, yes, you're correct. So, did you see how to fold that and put it together, so to speak? Yes. That's good. Okay. Name some a couple of things that you can make with a cube shape. Like, what do we have that's in that shape in life already? A nice jewelry box. Say that again. A nice jewelry box. Okay. Why can't everything y'all saying is a jewelry box? It can be a keepsake box. Yep. Say that again. Keepsake box. All right. Make it a little bigger and make it, and put you no know, put a different stuff in it. Put a different what? You can make it bigger, then it like a cube, and do that and make it like a keepsake box. Okay. Or you could make a bunch of boxes and stack them in an abstract way. And make it like different sizes, make it like puzzles. Yep. I see a chair. I see a chair. You can possibly make a chair because the the actual box part could be the seat, but you just have to build like a back on it and maybe some arms and a pillow. But I probably would make a Rubik's cube. You know, if you make a cube, all you gotta do is put all the little blocks on there and make different colors. So many things you can make in the shape of a cube. So Kim, what would you do? You would make your clay, you would use that to make your clay temper, and you would just have to score lightly what you want to bend? You would roll your clay out. Imagine if this is the uh, flat clay here. Then I would, this template is gonna be cut out. Then I would put my template on top of the clay, and trace it out. And yes, you have to you have to put these lines in it as well. And when you uh, you can cut these all out separate if you want to, and re put them together. Or I probably would just bend them up in the areas where they need to be, and go ahead and do the smoothing and creasing where I would need it to, you know, to be able to put it together. Did I answer your question? So you wouldn't score it so it will bend. You would just bend the clay in the shape. In the... Well, I said I would draw the, all the lines that you see and bend it in that area and go ahead and smooth it how it needs to be, score it and all that stuff. That's what I said. You can bend it, you have to smooth it to make it smooth and score it and everything. All right, so y'all ready for another design? Yeah. All right, let me get my pencil. And Kim, yes, can you do the same thing with a six-sided figure and an eight-sided figure? What I'm trying to show you is that I'm actually just making basic, des basic. designs. Okay. You can create your own template to make some type of three-dimensional figure 
like I just thought of an idea. You know, this is from my making something out of nothing class where I made an African. But if I made two of these and put a long strip around the sides, that can be an African vase. You know, you can make your own three-dimensional designs. And also right here, sorry, right here, if I put a long strip, which would be, let's say a long strip around the whole piece, it would make it three-dimensional with the back and put some kind of foot on it. But right here, I would leave an opening so it would be a vase. You can conceptualize any design that you want, but this is just the basic shape so that you can grow from that stage. All right, so our next template is going to be quick as well. So I might be able to do four. I'm going to draw a circle on one edge of my square. I'm going to do this one with a pencil first. I guess I can go ahead and uh, do it with my marker, if I can find the marker again, it's right here. All right, so I'm going to trace out this stretch magic circle. The reason why my circle is a little bit, well, it's not that small, it's an average size, but I have this size due to the square, the squares that I have. If I had something larger, I could make a larger template. All right, from there, I went to find the center of the circle, which would probably be here. And I'm going to draw a line going away from the circle all the way to the other opposite side of the block or square or page. And from there, I'm going to use a larger circle to, I'm getting my circle, young people. I think this circle is too large, but I'm going to use it anyway, right here. All right, I need to just I think it's gonna be fine. Pan out, right? That's not smooth enough. Sorry, let me grab another one. So this is the Lazy Susan that I was telling you all I purchased from uh, Ikea. And I just changed to that because the edges are smooth, smoother than the template that I already had because I already used that. And so I'm just going to draw like a half circle, so to speak. And then come down on the sides, but I need to measure first how long each side is so it will be exactly the same. Here. And maybe right there. All right, so I'm drawing a line from the tip. You're going to see once I actually draw everything in. Sorry, we're not in the same uh, room that you can't see step by step how I'm creating that, but right now you'll be able to. I know you can't see that unless I put the black bold line on it. One. Be mindful of when you use a Sharpie with different tools. I like to use something that I don't really care about getting black on it because the Sharpie is permanent. You will have like black lines on everything. So I'm going to grab this again just to 
draw this line quick so I don't have to hand draw, draw it and everything is wiggling everywhere like I said before. All right. And so this is how this piece is going to look. Anybody know what that shape is? It is a geometric shape. It does not come apart. You put it all together just like this. Just like when we put the cylinder together, this becomes a bottom, this becomes a top. You roll it up and that's a cylinder. Here, this is the bottom of the cube. This is the back. These are the sides. This is the a back of it and this is the top. So if you fold all that together, it's gonna to become a cube. What is this shape, young people? Like a cone. It is a cone. It is a cone. So you see, this is going to be the cone, and this is going to be the base to the cone. All right. So that's why I went on ahead and did that one, because it was really simple. And we're going to go ahead and do one more. And don't... Some of you may be feeling like you can't draw, but that's why you're going to use these shapes to create the piece. And, you know, just take your time. I, even if you think I've done these shapes really fast, it kind of still was really slow. It just took the time that I'm able to take, but you can do it. So don't uh, underestimate yourselves. This last piece I'm going to do is going to be, I'll just wait to ask you, do you uh, know or realize what it is? So in the center of my last square, I'm going to make, of uh, my last space, I'm going to make a, a square right in the center. And I think I can go ahead and do that with the marker instead of doing it with a pencil first. But the other four parts, I am going to have to do, use the pencil so that I don't make uh, any mistakes. I'm trying to have these templates look clean. All right, so the first part, you want to have a square right in the center of this because you need even space around your square for whatever page you have. And my, be mindful that I can cut all four of these out because I'm gonna cut them out to the shape to use them for templates on clay. And once I, maybe in another class, I'll just go ahead and roll out clay and demonstrate how you make those basic shapes from each one of these templates. So that'll probably be, maybe, I'm not sure if it'll be our next class, but I'm definitely gonna make it a demo to build the pieces from that. So from each side, which there are four sides of the square, I want to, uh, actually I want to draw a line from the center of the square. And each line has to be even. So I'm just eyeballing the first dot just so I can see how far it is and do each other line the same uh, length. So it's gonna be four, I think that's not even. Let me erase that. The center should be right there. I'm gonna do about four and a half inches. four and a half inches on each side from the center of the square, I've made a dot. That's one. I'm going to the four and a half mark, making sure it's straight and even. Two, three and turn it one more time for the fourth one four so with my pencil there are a lot of lines down here but you don't see the pencil lines you only see the dark line for the, from the sharpie and that's why I'm using the pencil for 
any lines that I don't want to show up, I can always go back and erase them. All right. So I have these four lines. I have a dot in the center and I have four lines coming from that dot in the center. From the tip of each of those four lines, I'm going to draw a slanted line coming to each corner of the uh, square. And I think I can go ahead and do that with my marker. So I'm putting my ruler to the tip. This is the last uh, design for the day. And I'm going to go around the entire block making these uh, triangles, so to speak. So I'm turning and I'm doing another one from the tip to the edge. Sometimes it just takes a couple of seconds to actually line it up, but just take your time. Miss Jacqueline, please uh, mute yourself, love. Oh, okay. It's all right. It's no problem. Uh, a lot of times I was saying, to, I have to say this all the time, don't take offense to me saying mute yourselves. You're not the only person in Sometimes we don't even know that we are making noise or anything like that. So don't feel no kind of way. But anytime you have something to say, you can just go ahead and unmute yourself again. So the as I'm sliding my ruler around, it kind of made the Sharpie bleed a little bit from the edge. But it's okay. I'm still going to use this template. All right, so this is our last geometric shape for today. Anybody knows what this piece, this shape is? Triangle. No, it's not a triangle. A star. No, it's not a star. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all so silly. A Chinese box. No, it's not Chinese a Chinese box. box. No, it's not even Chinese. It is Egyptian. How about that? It's African. Oh, pyramid. Pyramid. It's a pyramid. It's a four sided triangle of pyramid with the base. This is the base. Yeah. If you bring up each side, what you're going to see is a pyramid. <laughs> so, uh, I definitely will have those, excuse me, young people. I definitely will have those ships put out for the next demo that I want to have and the play rolled out. We're going to go ahead and uh, apply those shapes and put them to work on some clay so that I can, since you all, I mean, you all, you all are really professional when it comes to play. Of course, we all are still in the learning process. I'm still learning, even though I instruct you all. I learn from you all the time. And even though my last name is right, I'm not all, I'm not right all the time. I see you smiling, Miss Gloria. <laughs> that, that, that that you just did was geometry. That was, a, yes, indeed. Um, and I, <laughs> I, I had geometry in the 11th grade, I think in the 11th grade I took geometry. But, you know, to do one of those, I was just watching you, measurements and uh, all of that. You want us to do that for the next demo? You want us to create a shape and have it ready for the next demo? Okay. Um, the last and the only project that I've given you for this year, can anybody tell me what project y'all had for this year, meaning what actual class project that I give y'all? Community yeah, of Strength. Yeah. I've huh. Communities of Strength and Black History. Black History. So far, it's uh, from January to May. Those are the only two projects that I've actually given you that I've asked you all to please uh, produce. And I don't want to call out names. It's nothing like that. You can do it in your own time. But however, I have not received pieces from a lot of people that have to deal with Black History or communities of strength. 
Look at Mr. Mr. Cumberlander. Mr. Cumberlander, what you made? Uh uh, you have to unmute yourself. You're muting. Muted him so much until he just <laughs> now for now we have the program, he'd be all all out on the mic. Come on, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. What was you gonna say, Mr. Cumberlander? It seemed like his mic is I don't see his mic uh muted no more, but I can't hear him. Maybe your volume not turned up. I think he was gonna I think he's gonna try to tell me he made something for black history. But anyway, some people have made something for communities of strength and some people have not. So really those are the only two projects that I've given you thus far. Any demos that I that I'm sorry, Ms. Deborah Bell. Any demos that I always do is just that. It's just a demonstration and it's something to encourage you as it pertains to some techniques that you can possibly use in your own endeavors or your own artwork. For example, last week I did a tape resist uh, piece. When we return back to the classroom, you know, I might give y'all all a basic project, but some people be like, oh, well, I'm going to do this with my piece and I'm going to do that. You might decide, well, hey, if I tell everybody to make a pyramid, somebody might decide to do dot mandula design on it. I don't know. I'm just giving you these demonstrations to give you more techniques to use in your work. It's not a mandatory thing. But I'm still encouraging you to try uh, one of the, you know, I'm still encouraging you to try one of the pieces. Mm. Now, the reason why even still it seems so kind of geometric and I guess I would say difficult or it seems like it, even though I was running through them, remember I said what helped me out, what made it easy for me is to use different shapes that I already have. So it's not like I did a lot of measuring or uh, actually drew out these shapes on my own. That's why I didn't, didn't take that much time because I used tools that would help me get it done quickly, especially this square. That's why I was able to just go ahead and draw four squares in a row and two on the side and it was done. I didn't measure it out. I don't even know the measurement of this. So those are the things that can really help you do that. And uh, I'm going to- Kimberly, what's that shape that looks like an angel? That top now. Right here. Uh huh. Tell them what the shape is, everybody. A cone. You heard, Miss Ethereum? A cone. Yeah, but do you see how it was? So it sits, on, it sits on the round side. Now, when you fold it, roll it, it sits on that little round circle. This, yeah, the round circle's the base. This is the base, and this edge, if it was clay, this edge, you're going to seal to that edge. When you curve it like that, and it's going to become a uh -huh. cone. But for the bottom of this, this is going to be the base of it. All right. You know what all the other shapes are? Thank you. Like a pentagon and a octagon. Yes. We just said what that was. Thank y'all. Pyramid, you said. <laughs> Miss Jacqueline, why did you revert back to say this is a pentagon or octagon? We just said. No, was uh, I was just thinking, can we use different shapes like the pentagon, like this box right here? Makes a shape. I just said to you all, I was just giving you basic geometric shapes. However, I am encouraging you to go ahead and do your own. For okay. Example, That's what I was thinking. I said that I could use this Africa, the shape of Africa. I already have a piece of newspaper cut out. What I would need to make this three-dimensional is two of these. I have one, and then if I had another one, it would be the back. And all I have to do is make a long piece of clay like this to go around my sides, and that would make it three-dimensional. I can leave an opening right here where this where the part of Africa goes in, and that will make it a vase. 
you can create any like uh oh miss etheria explain to me how you would make three-dimensional lips like a lip like a mouth that looks three-dimensional you would draw the, the the mouth and then cut out a piece of scissors on top yeah but you the same shape all right say like if you had the shape of two lips like that and it's just the mouth. I'm gonna put that on some paper or draw a big mouth. And then I'm gonna put that on another piece of paper to make the back side. But I still need a strip to make the outer edge to put it all together. All right. So I was wrong. Ma'am. Was, was I wrong? Two no, half circles. Did I explain it? You wasn't wrong, you just missed what, Kim? the part. Hold on, say it. Oh, okay. How many people talking? <laughs> Who was that? I know. Now y'all ain't saying that. Who was that? I, I said two half circles in a in a triangle. I mean, yeah, a rectangle, rectangle. Two half circles and a strip to make lips. You gotta have the upper part of the lip. That's a half of a circle. No, listen. It's all I'm saying. show you this shape and tell me if it's uh three-dimensional it's it's uh hollow i did two shapes you have to show yourself Deborah. Beth. okay i'll you just go uh, just yeah, show show you this um now yeah, see this right quick oh oh okay this is okay the, this is a pair of lips that i just drew oh and yeah. ellipse you two ellipse Okay, I understand. Let's concentrate and focus, y'all. Y'all getting too off the subject. This is a pair of lips that I just drew. I'm going to cut right. these out and then I'm going to place it right here and trace it so that I can have two. One is going to be the front and one is going to be the back. That's what you just said, Miss Ethereum. However, I need a long strip to put around the edges so that it can become three-dimensional. Okay. All right. Well, I was going to show Etheria this strip that I put around yes. this bead. Okay. Like she just said, there was a front and a back, and then... You have to, you have to hold it still. You're shaking it. We can't see Oh, it. okay. Yes, see, I put that long strip around yes. the two sides. I cut out these two cylinders yes. on each side, and then I took the strip and ran that strip around it too to make it like, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, Miss Deborah. So it's hollow on the inside. Miss Deborah. Right? Miss Deborah. Those yeah. Are not cylinders. They're, they are ovals. Yeah, that's an oval shape. <laughs> it's okay. Mm -hmm. I just want them to use the, you, you, that looks very beautiful and it's three dimensional. It, well, I was long making long. it as a template. I still got to go back and seal it because I got a little space, Absolutely. but I'm making it as a template to then cover. And I think that's what you're, what you're showing us now with, with, uh, with yeah. creating your own, the lips or the Africa shape, whatever. Yes, yeah, it's hollow on the inside though. Yes, but I made a long strip, like she said, and went around the, um, the cutter. I used a cutter. An oval uh, cutter, just like she said, and that's clay. Miss Deborah Bell, can you hold that up like where the oval is showed to the side, but not long like that? Yes, just like that. Okay, this is what I'm trying to get y'all to see. Even though she has two ovals with the strip, say if I put two holes on the side, like Mr. Van Dyke had on his horn, and I put a chain on it and an opening, I could make a purse. So that's what I'm trying to get you to see. Even though you have shapes of something, you can make a purse out of it. I could put a slit in it and make it a, a, a bank, like a, a coin bank to put money in it. I can make it out of some kind of Easter egg deco decoration. 
You know, it's so, it's so many things that it could be. Thank you so much, Miss Deborah Bell. Yeah, I just did this the other day. It's amazing that that's what you were demoing because I was just playing with this, made this little hollow to make me a real big earring. Miss Deborah but Bell. But I'm there's no get, weight on it. Miss Deborah Bell. I'm yeah. going to get you to stop moving that thing like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kimberly, uh, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Kimberly. Yes, ma'am. Um, the there there are different um uh, for example, the lips on my black history piece, isn't that three dimensional? I didn't say make a three dimensional black history piece. I said make whatever you want to make, but what you made for your black history. No, no, that's not what I asked. That's not what I'm asking. Are there different kinds of three dimensional because I thought the lips that's on my black history piece was three dimensional. Your piece is for black history is not three dimensional. What it is is right. The lips, the lips. Miss Ethereum, I'm telling you, it's not three dimensional, it's raised. It's, okay. Thank it's you. It's not it's not three dimensional, it's like two dimensional because it's on the flat surface, but then you have another level, which makes it two dimensional, it's raised, but it doesn't have like four sides, top, bottom, you know, it's not hollow in the inside. That's what oh. makes something three dimensional. Okay, that's what I'm trying to find out. Let yes ma'am, it's okay, it's just raised. Okay. It's raised on different levels. Okay. Like your, lady whole, her, your lady's whole face is raised, and then you have the flower raised another level, yeah, it's just raised. It's like yes. a two-dimensional. All right. But if I took and put a border around the lips, that would make it three-dimensional. <laughs> if you made a whole nother lady's head and put it in the back and put a strip around it, it would become three-dimensional. Okay. Just like something like what Miss Deborah Bell showed us. Gotcha. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Combalanda. I can't hear you, Mr. Combalanda. Something's wrong with your audio. He done got his hand, the little hand symbol raised on that and everything. I've been seeing you, but we can't hear you. Oh, okay. Now I am. Carrie, you had your hand raised. She said no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with this cone shape, what could be made with this cone shape? In place. Ice cream cone. An ice cream <laughs> cone. That would be the first thing I would think of is an ice cream cone. So you have the cone. All you got to do is put your ice cream on it and your toppings or cherries or sprinkles or chocolate, whatever you like. That's the first thing I thought about. Of. You're right. I was trying to get y'all to say different things what you could make, but every time I ask y'all what y'all mean, y'all said a jewelry box. I'm like, a box is just a box. Even if <laughs> I was just trying to say like, with the cube, you could make a, a Rubik's cube, even though uh, so many things you can make, but you could make some dice. You could make, uh, like Miss Ethereum said, you could make a sofa, different things. Mr. Cumberlanda, I can't hear you. You, I don't see you muted, but something is wrong with the volume on your, on your device. Anybody have any comments or questions? It's, we started class at 10.30. It's almost 11.30. We have two more minutes, and I have to get ready for my schedule at the Harriet G. Darnell facility. Oh, don't forget, today we have uh, our last art show that will be presented by the Helling S. Mills Center, Nicole Smith. So, so far we've had Darnell's show, Benson, and Bowden's art show. Please support uh, and watch the Mills art show. It should be at 1 p.m. today. 1 p.m. And yesterday, you all know, I don't know if you tuned in, but uh, Darnell had our, we had our last uh, event for Old Americans Month, which, which, which was the 
Kitchen's culinary art show. It was called Cooking and Learning with Care. That was a really nice show. And so today, I want to thank you for tuning in to see how to draw 3D paper shape templates. We're going to definitely apply these shapes to some play later and go ahead and uh, create something. And so we've asked, asked you all, what could you make with all of these shapes? Which, what could you possibly make with a pyramid shape? A pyramid? Pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> You can put the uh, actual stone uh, lines on them to make it look like a pyramid. You can go ahead, after you make the pyramid, you can cut a little uh, door out where, you know, you descend down into the pyramid. You can put some steps on it if you like. You can put, you can put it on the platform and put palm trees around it. So... You can put a little hole in the top and, and, and then make the door the opening for the uh, tea light candle. Oh, yes. You can do that as well. So before we go, I just want to share a couple more things with you. Give me one second. Y'all have done a wonderful job today listening and participating. All right, so we were having uh, trouble saying what things that we could possibly make with a, hold on. We were saying we had, to me, we had trouble today naming some things that we could make out of those shapes. So I wanted to show you further how to create things in your works. Sometimes everything ain't just gonna come out of your mind. You have to research and go to different uh, things that could possibly help your ideas. So right now I'm gonna screen share and go to this page that I just pulled up. Some things that you can make that look like a cylinder, that have the cylinder, cylindrical shape. You can make a can of beer. You can make a test tube, coffee mug, the cylinders of a car engine. You can make a finger when it's straight. You can make a copper pipe for water, a PVC pipe, a steel pipe. You can make a candle. A candle has a cylinder shape. You can make a dowel, a flashlight a double-A battery, a triple-A battery, a can of beans. You can make a cigarette. You can make a roll of toilet paper. That's true. A roll of paper towels. You can make a tree trunk. You can make a piece of chalk. You can make a drinking straw. Those are just some things that have the shape of a cylinder. So let's just go, since we were limited with that pyramid, let's see how many things they have as it pertains to a pyramid. Images for things shaped like a pyramid. Pyramids or to, to try tetra, tetrahedrons, tetrahedrons. I guess what they said is you can make fragrance bottles, perfume bottles that are in the shape of a uh, you all still see that screen? Yes. Okay. They say you can make a perfume bottle shaped like a pyramid, a paperweight, an umbrella, kind of like I guess is down. Well, you know, I just thought about. Uh, I'm sure you've bought them for your children for your children before, or you've had one. But y'all remember those uh, Astro Pops? They were like a little stick with some kind of. Uh, I guess it was just like a Cairo syrup type of, it was just sugar, but it was like red, green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You used to find for your kids, you can make a pops of. They uh, still have that on the uh, ice cream truck. <laughs> yep. This, but this one, they do have that in ice cream, but I'm talking about this was just a lollipop. And it a popsicle. Like yeah. Sugar. Mm -hmm. Cafe umbrellas. 
Christmas decoration is really like a pyramid. You can make a tree. All you have to do is put different uh, spikes on it to make the ends. You can make cheese out of a pyramid. And that's all they have. But even though they've offered you just a few, that doesn't mean that you can't come up with uh, different shapes of your own to make out of these shapes, make with these shapes, so to speak. So I just want to go. Make a party hat. Oh, yes. Party Birthday hat. hat. Got a good imagination. That's a really good one. I wasn't even thinking about that one. That's really good one. A real good one. All right, so we're just going to go through one more, even though I know I said we're going to get off this class. All right, we got one more. I just thought it was kind of getting a little fun. So we're going to, let me come back to you, beautiful young people. Screen share. Nope. Here. All right, so with the cube, you can make a mailbox. You can make a photo frame a shoe box, a TV, tissue box, everything is a box, board game, cushions, some boiled sweets. You can make dice. So I've already said dice. And let's check this one out. Seven everyday life examples of a cube. They have a cubed uh, watermelon right there. Y'all see that? They actually grow watermelons like that in some part of the world. I can't remember. It's some Asian country that they have these types of baskets that they put the seeds in. And when the, se when the actual watermelon grows, it conforms to the shape of that uh, cube. So that's why they're in a cube shape. That's not a natural growth. They um, kind of like force it to grow like that. You can make an ice cube tray. Sugar cubes, Rubik's cubes. Remember, I said Rubik's cubes. You can make an old iron locker. You can make a gift box, jewelry box, like you all said, building blocks. It's so much. It's so much in life that you can make with a cube or a block. So, I mean, you can look around your. Everybody can look around their room right now and see something in the shape of a cube, or it might have a more rectangular shape, but it's something that you can definitely find. Like with the cube, even though this has round sides, I could make my own shape clock with the cube. I could put, instead of having one little cube, I can stack three on top of each other and make like a grandfather's clock or a china cabinet or a dresser. You know, it's so many things you can make. All right. In my room, and so far, the only thing I see in a cube shape are the... Uh... The grids in my window panes. <laughs> That's those squares. I don't see anything else. <laughs> okay, but well, nothing. Said, a cube might be doubled into something like a rectangle or something. But you know, something around your house. You can find some of these shapes around your house. I'll show oh, you. Oh, the shelving. There's some cubes shelving. Yes. All right. Yes, different. That's stuff. what I was thinking. Yeah, oh. that's. I do have a cube there. This okay. is a cylinder. But it's like a little footstool. I'm just saying, this is some of the shapes that we're working with right here. This is a cylinder, but it's like a. I have something right here, Kimmy. Yes, ma'am. That's a little portable air conditioner. Oh, yeah, that's cute. And if you made your cube and put the little lines on it where the vent is and the buttons, that would be a cute little air conditioner. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> Right. You about to say something, Miss Diana? No? Okay. All right. I love you all. Thank you so much for joining Hand Built Pottery. You all are so dedicated and loving and creative. Uh, don't forget our art show for the Mills facility is at 1 p.m. And I'll be at the Darnell facility from 1.30 to 3 if you need to drop off anything or anything like that. And um, just keep on being creative and take risks. And don't forget, there's no mistake in art on Discoveries. My name is Kimberly Wright. Have a wonderful and blessed day and enjoy your weekend. Don't forget, young people, that we will not be having class on Monday because we are closed Monday for the holiday. 
Yes. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Everybody have a great weekend and be safe. Thank you so much. Wow. It's a love. Wonderful one. See you next week. Yes, ma'am.